So. That's right, yeah. And then, like, that's a big introduction, but... It is, yeah. Okay. So, okay. how long do you think you're going to talk for? Um, I mean, I was thinking at least leaving ten minutes for questions. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I could go... With yeah, we're all good, yeah. <laughs> I could talk again if nobody has questions, <laughs> people usually do. I'm sure they will, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in theory, we might, we will get some online questions as well. Ah, see. Sometimes cool. they pop up, sometimes they don't. All right. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> All right, thanks for coming to Package Manager powering automatic updates in Project Browser to Drupal's Easy Composer Future. Um, so I am Ted Bowman. I'm a principal software. Maybe that's probably why you had the mic not pointed at me directly. <laughs> um, so I'm a principal software engineer at Acquia at the Drupal Acceleration team. Um, we work mostly on Drupal community projects. I'm the tech lead of Automatic Updates Initiative and um, a co-maintainer of Layout Builder and Setting Stray in Drupal Core. I'm Ted Bo on Drupal Slack and or Drupal Drupal Slack and Twitter. Um, so, yeah, today we're talking about Package Manager, which is a mo an API module. We're not particularly talking about automatic updates or project browser, but it will tell you a lot about like system requirements and what's happening behind the scenes and how to customize um, any module that, or customize the experience of automatic updates in project browser. Um, so why are we interested in an easy composer future? Um, so basically um, it concerns two initiatives, um, automatic updates and project browser. So in Portland, um, Dries sort of laid out this idea of ambitious site builder, um, sort of pivoting from an ambitious sites to site builder, so a persona of somebody who wants to, you know, make an ambitious site through the browser, uh, maybe a little, maybe some coding, some configuration, um, but not, but, you know, kind of focusing on what you can do as a site builder. And a site builder is kind of, a, has been a sort of, I think, sort of a unique role in Drupal's sort of framework slash CMS um, chameleon that Drupal is. And also sort of focused on the composable core or composable Drupal. Um, the good news is that Drupal is already composable, like you said earlier today. Um, it's just not as composable, depending on who you are, it's either more or less composable, or the, it's the skills you have. Um, and you know, anybody can, learn the skills to sort of do it from the command line and deal with Composer directly, but, you know, a lot of people have, you know, usually a site builder is not just a site builder, they're doing a whole lot of other things. So um, it's not just like, just learn Composer and you won't have to deal with any of this, it's like you're already learning probably not only Drupal site building, but some hosting and just a bunch of other stuff that's not Drupal specific. Um, so automatic updates in Project Browser, we're trying to empower the ambitious site builder and move a lot of tasks that are usually in the command line to the admin UI. Um, so they both need to execute Composer commands for this. So a brief introduction of automatic updates. 
is that you know the current problem is that site maintenance is really high for a lot of sites um, and updates is part of that and a lot of sites just don't apply security updates we know that from usage statistics even after like really critical security updates they'll just be a you know months lag before we get a critical mass of sites on on the latest security updates um, so in composer is a pain point for many um, Drupal site builders and developers. Um, and then, um, so automatic updates, its first sort of goal is to update Drupal core via Composer. We have an experimental module that does contrib modules and themes, but the module really, the automatic updates contrib module is really sort of a roadmap for core. We're not really building features that we don't plan to be either in the core MVP or so soon after. Um, we're doing the contrib version, the experimental module, and hopefully we'll make it stable also because eventually we want not only core updates in core, but also contrib. Um, and the target date, like what we'd love to get it in, is for 10.1, but probably in experimental stage. Um, we'll see. Uh, there's a lot going on in Drupal core, obviously outside of automatic updates to get out Drupal 10. So could be 10.1, could be a little after. Um, this is just the form. It's just pretty uh, generic. Uh, you see your current version, you see the next, I guess in this case, a patch version update. Um, right now it doesn't support minor versions, except if you set a config switch, it'll show you the next minor, so you can go from one minor to the other. Um, but uh, we're trying to roll out features sort of in a more, not, roll out everything all at once because there's a lot of problems that could even happen with just a patch release. So we want to sort of get that as stable as possible, that process, and then add stuff like uh, minor updates. So you can do minor updates now, it's just sort of more potentially minor, up anything that could happen in a minor update potentially could happen in a patch update, but more likely there's going to be larger changes in, in minor updates. Um, and this is the experimental module, um, you know, updating your modules or themes. Just a reminder, it's experimental, so people are using it, but, you know, it's, uh, it's not actually, so I would say the experimental part of this is not necessarily that it's much more difficult to update contrib or core, contrib versus core. It's not, the composer option is very s similar. It's just core is very, um, the rules for what gets in a patch release, what gets in a minor release, and backwards compatibility is very well defined in core, and a lot of people's are, eyes are on it. And depending on the contrib module or theme you have, um, a patch release could easily break backwards compatibility. Um, I'm sure there are modules out there that are very, you know, very careful about ba backwards compatibility, and then there's probably some that aren't. And there's no way for the automatic update module to say, well, I mean, potentially we do scanning of your code, but there's not an easy way for us to tell, okay, this module is probably safe to update a patch version because it's not likely to break anything, and this module X is and module Y is not. So I would say the experimental part of it, a lot of it is, um, is just seeing what happens when you update di different contrib, and probably a lot of the same problems uh, that you would see through just regular straight composer updates you would see through this UI. Um, we are doing things like security checking on the updates. We're not, that part's not experimental. We're not saying, okay, we'll just let you update to anything. We don't care. We're definitely checking security and that it's supported and stuff like that. Um, but we're not scanning the code to say, okay, did they break backwards compatibility? Um, project browser. So right now, like searching for new modules requires leaving your Drupal site. Um, and it's, when you go to drupal.org, you're not necessarily gonna see modules or themes that are, that are compatible with your site. Um, so doing it via the UI is gonna allow you to search modules um, that are compatible for your site. And again, this is also a composer being a pain point is, a, is sort of one of the commonalities between automatic updates and project browser. Um, so we covered that. So right now, the project browser module just currently displays 
the composer command, you copy it in the command line and then you install the module that way. Um, we're working right now um, to have that be automatic via composer and that's sort of where package manager comes in. So this is the UI for browsing. Um, so, so they share the problem of, you know, composer being a pain point for a lot of people. Um, so they both need to execute composer commands and they both need to do it in a standard way, meaning like if you update via automatic updates, you uninstall the module, there really should be no sort of tell that you used automatic updates. Or if you install a module via a project browser, you should be able to completely uninstall it and it's just a standard like as you if you had installed it via the command line with composer. And it also needs to be able to do, do the composer operations safely. So that's where Package Manager comes in. Um, it's an API-only Drupal module. Right now, it's within the automatic updates uh, contrib module, and that's solely because we started working on this functionality in automatic updates first. If Project Browser had started working on it first, they probably would have, we would have, you know, worked on it in the Project Browser repository. Um, it's nothing specific to automatic updates, but we did, um, there was some validation that was only in automatic updates, but now that we have a second use case, Project Browser is like, oh, we need that kind of validation too, so we moved some stuff into Project Browser um, that was only in automatic updates before. So I'll try to comment on, on those things as we go by. Um, Package Manager doesn't really, um, it can update any Composer project. That's not how uh, automatic updates and Package Manager are using it. But it doesn't like check to see, okay, you're trying to install or update something that is a Drupal project. You just send it a package name and a version that you want. Um, but it does have Drupal specific security checks. Um, so how it works right now is we have automatic updates and we have a sub module called package manager, which this presentation is about. And then package manager calls this outside PHP library that uh, was also made by the initiative called Composer Stager. Um, and then Project Browser right now has to be dependent on automatic updates just because the submodule lives within the repo. So let's look at Composer Stager. So this is a PHP library. It's not Drupal specific. It really doesn't have any knowledge of Drupal. Um, and it runs operations in a staged copy. So the goal is to basically be able to safely perform composer operations in a live site. Um, technically, it doesn't have to be a website, it could be anything, with uh, at least downtime as possible. So it copies all of the uh, composer managed code, um, and you sort of tell it what is not composer managed into a copy, and performs the co composer operations there, and then merges this site, the changes back into the site. So it has a phase called begin where it takes the active site and it copies over it into a staged copy. And it has some, because it has no Drupal knowledge, Composer Stager itself wouldn't know, it'd be like, oh, don't move the site files or whatever over there, or don't move my SQL database, my SQLite database that's in there. Um, then in the staged copy, it runs one or more Composer commands there. And then on commit, it takes a stage copy and moves the files over. It comes with two copiers. One is a rsync runner um, where it would only move the changed files and then there's, because rsync is probably not available in a lot of environments, um, there's sort of a dumb PHP copier that just sort of copies everything over. Um, right now, by default, automatic updates is using the sort of dumb PHP copier and that's mostly because um, Drupal CI couldn't run. We didn't have Drupal CI, didn't have rsync for us to test on. Um, once we move to uh, GitLab, we'll be able to have rsync and we can have the default copier be, um, be the rsync runner. It just seemed not prudent to have the default sort of copier be something that we're not currently testing, um, even though rsync is obviously well tested itself. Um, and then the final stage is you clean the uh, you clean the um, the stage copy just by deleting it. Um, there is a separate library. It used to be the same one in Composer Stager, but now it's a separate library to make the main library simpler. That runs that has a compose uh, Symphony console command that you can actually run this from the command line. 
Um, okay, so that's composer stager, you know, basically copies, does composer operations, copies back, not Drupal aware. So if we look at package managers and API only Drupal module, it performs the staged updates via composer, or I guess staged operations, really any operations. And it, it doesn't really have an opinion on whether you can update something inside Drupal, outside Drupal. Um, you just send it a package name. And uh, so the, in the automatic updates example, uh, this is an update process video. So you have your site here, it's on 931, and then you're, you're currently, you have visitors going to your site, and we make a staged copy of your current code base, um, excluding things that you tell us we don't need, and to copy over like your sites, well, automatic updates would tell package manager like, hey, I don't need sites default files. Um, and then in that staged copy, we run composer update, to 9.3.12, we briefly put your site into maintenance mode, and then we copy, I think I'm not, we copy this over, so now your site's running 9.3.12, and then we take your site out of maintenance mode, and then we delete the stage copy. So there is a brief time where um, part of the reason of using Composer Stager is you don't want to, we want to check certain things in that staged copy, so we don't want to run the Composer command directly on your site. So if something is wrong or something, um, something happens in that com during the Composer command that we didn't expect, then we don't actually have to run the update. Um, so like a direct API usage of Package Manager, it really doesn't care you know, what you're updating. It could be Drupal Core, it could be anything. And then also there's no like version restrictions on like say if you want to update from version one to, to version nine, it doesn't care. Um, so with automatic updates in particular, we have a lot of rules about like what you can update from and what you can update to. We don't support dev version as the target or the, um, the, the version you're coming from. So we're doing a lot of safety checks. Um, but, compo but Package Manager itself is sort of not opinionated on that. So, uh, so what else does Package Manager do for you? Basically, like, why not just use Composer Stager directly? So there's a lot of good things inside of Package Manager. One is the idea of path exclusions. So we'll get into events later, but basically you can tell Package Manager, like, when you're, what automatic updates does is say, hey, don't, or actually, I guess this is in Package Manager itself. It says, don't copy over site's default files or wherever your public and private files are. Don't copy .git directories if you find them. Don't copy the SQLite database file. So it has, because it's Composer Stager is not Drupal aware, but Package Manager is, it can know certain things that aren't basically Composer managed. And we want to copy, we want to exclude anything that we can that when we have the staged copy, the composer command would still run correctly. So we can't necessarily exclude, say, mo any of your code or anything that composer knows about, we can't exclude, but anything that composer wouldn't care about, we can exclude just to make the file copying um, take less. Um, as certain safeguards like enforcing HTTPS for composer and Drupal.org update XML fetching. So you could set Composer to not um, require HTTPS to get its package information, but we just like do some of those checks, like ensure it um, does that. We check the Composer patches library to make sure there's an option to, I forget what the default is, but basically you can have it still succeed if the patch fails. And so we obviously don't want that in a situation where the user would think that everything succeeded. So we make sure that the composer operation won't succeed if the patch doesn't fail. And we, uh, another check is like, make sure that there's no pending database updates because if you're either installing or updating anything new, you probably don't wanna have pending updates sitting there. Um, it prevents simultaneous operations. So the idea that if you had the begin stage of package manager and you left it sitting out there, you didn't finish your either project install or your update, and then for some reason, somebody went to the command line and ran another composer command. We will check that on commit and say, actually, you know, is your, 
is the, is the active site in the same state it was when we first started this? Because the last commit stage is not really composer aware. It ran the composer command in the staged copy, but then it's just doing a file transfer of, okay, here's what's changed, and let me add it to the site. So if you had changed, if you had actually run a composer command during that time, obviously you could lead to a lot of problems. So it also prevents operations where it doesn't allow like automatic updates to be in the middle of one operation, then project browser to come in and be in, in the middle of another operation. So basically, what we call a stage in package manager, the only one stage can be active at a time. Um, this is currently a work in progress, but in automatic updates, we check everything that's changed against update XML, which is gonna tell us whether it's secure, published, and supported. Um, we're moving this into package manager because um, even though project browser sort of has their own way of figuring out if something is secure to offer to the user whether they should install it or not. You never know, like basically Project Browser has to consider that they're not just installing a module, they may be installing module X and module Y is being updated and module Z is being added. Because um, like, you don't know, even if the module X only has one dependency, you don't know how many dependencies its dependency has and if it's gonna require any other updates. So we basically, package manager just scans and says, okay, any Drupal projects that we could get XML for, have their versions changed or are there any new ones? If there are, then we go out to, to drupal.org and say, make sure these releases are secure. And if it's not, then we stop the, the process from happening. Um, this is just an example of update XML from drupal.org and one of the things it would tell you is if a particular release is secure or not. Yeah, so this is a work in process. It's currently in automatic updates, but because Project Browser basically needs the same thing, we're just moving it down into the API module. Um, we, this is also, part of this is done. The second part is, I think, is either done or will be done in the next couple of days. Basically, we do a lot of work to try to prevent conflicts with non-composer code. So, some sites could still have modules that aren't managed by Composer, and they may be in a custom folder, they may not be in a custom folder. Um, so basically, after you do a Composer operation, we make sure there's no duplicate info files after the operation that weren't there before. I mean, you may have duplicate info files for some reason, but if we cause that in Package Manager, then that probably means that either a dependency was installed that wasn't there before, as far as Composer knows, but it was actually there in your Drupal site. Um, and then we also prevent you from overwriting any directory that if you install a, a package that is new according to Composer, we can't have it wipe out an active directory. So that, that would either indicate that there was a package there or a Drupal project there that Composer didn't know about, or say you have a, a um, modules slash contrib slash notes folder where you keep all your notes and then you installed the web form notes module and then it had a dependency on the notes module which then goes in modules contrib notes and wipes out your notes folder. So um, we're not particularly like scanning because um, Drupal has a different idea of like what Drupal's idea of what projects it has has in some sense, no relationship to what Composer thinks it has. Um, so we have to do a bit of work to say, okay, if you're not fully managed by Composer, we have to avoid you. We can't, we're not trying to solve those problems for you, but we are trying to stop the operations if that happens. And what that would mean in, in say, in automatic updates is you would just get to the update continue screen um, and we would check these things for you and be like, sorry, you can't proceed because you have you had C tools as a Git clone, and we stage C tools in a different directory. And if we move those in, you would now have two versions of C tools, or you had C tools in the correct location, sites contrib, but it wasn't managed by Composer, and so Composer thought C tools was new. So we can't be sure that you have you would have the same version of C tools. Um, we also do some stuff to prevent edge cases like. Um, 
actually, most of the time you would think my sum module on drupal.org equals to drupal slash sum module, but actually it could be sum module to drupal slash literally anything. It's the packages on drupal.org usually prevents this, but I think it's because of modules being split out that we can never guarantee that this is always gonna be the case. So we have to always check against this. So we do some checking to see and why this is really important is for checking the update XML. We need to make sure that we're getting the right project. Um, basically, if we had a package called Drupal literally anything, we can't necessarily check literally anything's update XML. We have to sort of do a transfer to see, okay, what is the real project that, the thing that Composer thinks it installed, what is the real Drupal project for that? Um, it's not like very common at all, but these are the kind of things that like, if you could figure this out, you could use this to attack something by making it think it had the wrong update, making you think you had the right up update XML when you didn't. Um, the life cycle for, for the update process is, this is similar to what we talked about um, for Composer Stager, just slightly different named. Um, the life cycle events is basically, this is, is how we do all the validation, but this is really a custom module would really want to tap into this. Um, we have a, a pre and post for every event uh, stage in the process and all the pre events can stop the next process from happening. So on pre apply, we would check something like, was there another composer operation that we didn't know about in the active site? So an example of that would be the idea of like preventing this situation here is on pre-create, we would store a hash of the active composer lock, and then on every time you did try to require something or apply the update, we check, okay, is the stored active lock that we had, is it the same as the actual active lock now? And if it's not, that means some other composer operation happened that we don't know about. Um, so it needs a writable file system because you're updating code. So a lot of hosting, this is not gonna work on directly. Um, and it's, it's targeted somewhat to the long tail sites or in the composer, in the project manager, project browser um, use case, you might be, in, often you're just installing the modules locally. So you have a writable system there. So I think automatic updates and project browser have sort of different concerns about the writable file system. Project browser, if you're using it to site build and install modules, the writable file system is probably a given because you're, you're local. But automatic updates, that's more of a concern uh, if you want to apply the updates directly. Um, you can do this stuff in local environments. It's not version control aware, though you could write a contrib module that does, um, using the event system, does commits afterwards. Um, yeah, so a possible contrib solution to this problem would be it using pre-apply and post-apply to either like tag the current code and commit it afterwards. I think it was deemed out of scope for core is because a lot of people use uh, Git differently. Um, so I imagine there'll be contrib solutions. Um, yeah, we'll see. That's sort of one of the most common questions we get. Um, and right now it does not work with multi-site. Um, Basically, uh, it's very hard. Like right now, we didn't write a locking system that would be across sites. We prevent a lot of things from happening during the apply phase, basically the last point where we're copying all the code over. Um, we prevent you from uh, uninstalling modules. Um, I forget what are the things we prevent. But basically, and you can't say just, you can't get rid of an update that is in progress in the apply stage. So to support multi-sites, we really have to know across all of your sites is anybody performing operations. And because you're using the same code base and same like JSON API, composer.json and composer.lock on your multi-sites, um, it's really difficult to have multiple, op well, you shouldn't have multiple operations going on in the same ones. So, um, you know, there's possible ways to get around this. You know, you could have settings in settings.php or sites.php that says, okay, this only this one site can perform operations via package manager. Um, you could allow it in local development only. Um, basically, we haven't had enough. Yeah, there hasn't. I mean, there's been some 
most of the people who've wanted this feature sort of want it locally. They want to be able to do operations locally even when their sites.php says it's a multi-site because if you're local, you know you're not a multi-site or you know that other sites aren't operating at the same time. Or in a case where you have a pretty small multi-site and you know the people who manage all, maybe the same people manage all the sites, you know when you can do an operation, you know when the other sites are should be down or could be put into maintenance mode. Whereas if you have 100 sites and you're updating core and for through one of the sites, but it's updating everybody's code, all of those sites really should be in maintenance mode at the same time. Um, so using it in production versus development environment. Um, so the pros for using it in the development environment is uh, obviously for automatic updates, if you want to keep your site secure, um, then you need to, on an ongoing basis, without you having to be there, uh, it needs to be in production. Um, cons is, you know, there's not, it's not version control friendly unless you write custom code. Potentially, contrib will solve this. Um, it needs a writable file system, which is incompatible with a lot of hosting. Um, and the staged update even though it's in a staged copy and we can check things like, okay, are your versions of particular modules secure? Right now, we don't have a process for bootstrapping your whole site and testing stuff. Potentially, you, it would be possible, um, but for a lot of sites, that would be very difficult because you'd have to copy a very large database over. You can't really point, in most cases, you probably can't point to the real database and just say bootstrap with, with this code because um, there's not a guarantee that, that that just bootstrapping it won't write something to the, to the database. And if then if you decide not to update, you've already bootstrapped the site on the new version of Drupal, which could make changes that are, Drupal doesn't downgrade well, basically, is the problem. So, um, uh, I suppose there could be, you know, you could, there could be some contrib that could actually run test in that stage environment, but right now we're not running PHP unit tests or anything in that environment. Um, use and development. Um, so project browser use case is probably more suited for using package manager in development. Um, it would save site builders from having to deal with Composer directly. Um, they would still have to use version control in the same way they're using now unless a contrib comes up with a solution for that. Um, and you can fully test your changes. Um, you could, like at Akubu, we have this uh, cloud IDEs, which, or I think that's the name. Anyways, you can spin up an environment that is writable. So potentially you could do, um, you could use Project Browser or automatic updates in there to update via form and then move the code over in the same way you would usually do. Um, all right, so let's look in under the hood. Um, so the main thing that does operations in package manager is called a stage and automatic updates provides a class called updater which extends stage and project browser is will soon have something called installer that also extends stage and you could have say your own module have a class called remover which just is to remove packages and extend stage generally anytime that you wanted to use Package Manager API to provide your own types of operations, you would want to extend the stage class. Um, this is the simplest example of using the stage. Um, and this is, this is actually from our test code is we have the stage class instance from Package Manager. We call create, which copies all the composer managed code over to the stage environment. Then we call require and we tell it, you know, what we want to require and then we call stage apply, and that moves it back over. So this used to be kind of exactly how it worked. It's a little more complex now because when we were testing the update from either 9.3 to 9.4 or 9.4 to 9.5, they changed the location of the database drivers, and we thought we had, or something to do with the database drivers changed either 9.3 to 9.4 or 9.4 to 9.5, and we thought we had sort of cleared out all the caches we could possibly do, and I think we had, um, but that caused a failure after the update. So the more realish example of what happens is this top part is the same where you do create, require, and then apply, but 
we have a post-apply event, if you remember the events earlier. Where did, did I get to the events? Yeah. Events. Yes. We have a post-apply event and then post-destroy and actually pre-destroy. So pre-apply happens and then all the code is moved over and then all the other events, you can't really do them in the same web request because there's no guarantee that whatever you updated didn't change like every file in Drupal. I mean, potentially it's not gonna change every file in Dr Drupal, but it could change any file in Drupal. And so you're basically not guaranteed about which versions of those files you would get because of the PHP class loader. Um, you may get the previous versions of those in the same web request if they've already been loaded. If they haven't been loaded, you would get the new versions. So you're kind of in an indeterminate state of like mishmash of, of what classes you would load in PHP. So how we're currently getting around that is this is the test example, but, but the, up, the regular updater and automatic updates does something similar, is after apply, we immediately reroute you to another um, send a redirect, and then we finish in another web request. And what we're doing here is after we get at the top part during create, we save the ID. So for always, you pretty much have to be doing the very last step in another request. Um, so you save the ID and you can only claim the stage, which we're doing in the first here, if you have that ID and if you're the same session that um, started it. We do a lot of checks to make sure that if you somehow break the lock of, we have a message, um, a method to destroy an existing stage, that you can never destroy an existing stage and then have another one come in and somehow accidentally take it over. Um, and uh, so you claim the stage and then you do post apply, which fires the post apply event, which a lot of times clears cache but also could be anything in the future, say if there was actually an, a security update to the update system itself, we have to be sure that we've loaded all the new classes there, and then we destroy the stage. So basically, after we apply, we basically try to get out of the current web request as soon as possible. In the cron updater, which cron updates and automatic updates are currently turned off because of um, the DA is still working on the um, sort of package signing that needs to happen on the server. But once cron updates uh, are finished, we actually will do another request to do post apply stuff because that's the only way we can guarantee that the new update is loaded. Um, quick example of a module. This is called the Tedbo module preventer silly custom module. So basically, if you're familiar with the event system in Drupal, how you would customize uh, the pack, any package manager process is by doing an event subscriber and listening to one of our events. And this most of the code here is we're going to have the event which knows about the stage, and then it, we're going to get the active composer and the stage composer, and we have a utility function that says give me everything in the stage that was not in the active, and then we're just going to loop through all the packages and see if they start with tedbo slash. And if they do, then we're gonna add an error so you can't go through this operation. Um, so to do a lot of the stuff about validation, you don't really know how to have to know how the whole system works. You just have to know which events to listen to and then how to get the packages that are say in stage and inactive and sort of compare like, is there something you wanna prevent there? Um, how you would target a particular use case of package manager is in this case, when I listen to the event, the first thing I do is I check if the stage is an instance of our updater. If it's not, then I return. So a lot of our listeners in automatic updates, we only care about affecting automatic updates use of package manager. Um, so this would be the same for project browser. Um, we would check if the stage is an instance of the project browser installer. That is a, why I said that technically you don't have to extend the stage, but you almost always should extend the stage so that you can target just your operations. Uh, not real yet. Okay, I think we're about over 15 minutes. 
Less than 15 minutes. Less than 15 minutes. Okay. okay. All right. Questions. Who has a question? Um, I just had a couple of quick questions. Um, so eventually this is planned to be moved into core, right? Yeah. Okay. So that the whole point of it being inside of the automatic updates module, yeah. it'll eventually not matter. That's temporary. Like, so the plan is now automatic updates would get into core first and package manager would get in as a, as its separate module there then. Gotcha. But if for some reason we got delayed in automatic updates, something tr was more tricky than we thought and project browser got in first we would probably move, we move package manager and project browser in. So it doesn't have to be automatic updates that moves in first. It just, whichever moves in first, package manager has, has to be there to support it. Gotcha. And then um, other question, does it run update.php when it does um, these updates? So right now when you go through the form, you get routed to update.php okay. and told to do it. On cron update, we do a test. So we have all the cron update stuff finished we just have a feature flag turning it off but the logic in the cron one we actually check to see if there's any staged updates in your staged uh, site and we don't we would probably catch some that aren't there we're very paranoid about checking it um, but if we find a potential update that needs to, a db update that needs to happen we prevent it on cron because cron that could always like hose your site completely so somebody as of now really somebody needs to be there during uh, to run database updates. So if we detect that it will happen, we don't allow you to do that during cron. Gotcha, yep. thank you. Yep. Can I just ask a quick online question before I go back to the group? And that is just a, um, a guy called Joz has asked, um, how does this play with other um, different composer frameworks like the Core Composer Scaffold, or particularly he's asked about um, Cameron Egan's uh, patches. Yeah, so framework. the Composer patches thing, right now the only validation we have is if you have it, we make sure that you have the setting that the Composer operation will fail if the patch doesn't apply cleanly. So you can't have the patches in there, do our Composer operation, they don't, they don't succeed and then we don't know about it. So basically, you know, we don't fix your patches or anything if they don't apply, but right now if they cleanly apply, then we'll go forward. Okay, so whatever composer file, it will try and run it basically. It does, I mean, it just does a composer update require. It doesn't, doesn't necessarily know about composer packages, uh, yeah, patches, except for to check for that one setting. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Who has a question? Yeah. I had the similar question about the patches because right now when you do composer update mm -hmm. manually mm -hmm. uh, and if a module or core has a patch which has now been merged into the core yep. and yep. then you apply via composer manually, it updates everything even though it gives you an error that the patch cannot be applied but it has already updated. So what if, if the same thing happens uh, with automatic updates? I mean, the, the particular issue which has been used as a yeah. uh, patch is already applied to the... Um, so if your patch doesn't apply cleanly, then the composer operation we do in the stage copy of site would fail because of the setting we check in composer patches. Um, so if it doesn't apply anymore, then the composer operation in the staged environment would not succeed and then we wouldn't we couldn't proceed with the update anymore. Since we're never doing the composer operation directly in your active site, I mean, you're not gonna, you won't be able to update, but also you won't apply it, you know, you won't apply an update where you think you have a patch, but you no longer do. So we don't, we don't help you out with the patch situation, except for to prevent it from proceeding if it doesn't work. So you have to manually remove the patch from the composer update? You have to figure that situation out yourself, yeah. Uh, at least for the MVP, yeah. Hi. Um, I think I know the answer yeah. to this, but it follows to say if you have composer scripts, yeah. those are just going to run as they normally would and would, you know, anything yeah. there. If those throw an error, are you able to, to catch that? And um, Right now, we don't, we're not, we catch it in the sense that we tell you, hey, there was a composer. We're not smart about, like, we just show you whatever composer would show you and prevent the update. Um, yeah, so anything, any composer plugins or scripts that would run on in like a post update command, they will be run because composer just knows it's a regular command. And if they cause that operation to fail, 
then you would basically be told during the stage that, hey, sorry, it didn't work. Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. So you said that it prevents copying the SQL? Uh, SQLite database, yeah. Yeah, but then how does it check that there is no pending or the pending updates in the, in so the database? <laughs> how we do it now is we look at the install, dot install and dot update PHP files, the files that could have it, if they are not exactly the same as in, oh, so before we do the update, before we create, we check to see if there's any pending that haven't been applied to the active site. And then in stage, we compare for all the modules that are currently enabled, all the dot install and all the dot post update files. If they are not exactly the same, mm -hmm. then we say there's a potential update, so we're not going to apply. That could be just a comment. So it doesn't touch the database. Yeah. Okay. So there could be a comment that changed, and there's not really one. So we're definitely going to have some false positives, but hopefully we won't have any false negatives. Okay. Just well, I have another. <laughs> Like, um, so in, um, in an update that is uh, through the browser, yep. uh, you make another request, but the cron updater is going to spin off a new uh, PHP process? or Right now, it's going to make another request. Um, like a web request? Yeah, okay. but we're probably, that is probably not the solution we're going to go with finally, because um, the first version of this module, which was not Composer uh, where they actually did it via console command, um, so we're going to have to look for a better solution for that. But right now, it's another web request. Okay. But that could be a problem if um, you have restrictions about outbound requests. Yeah. Okay, that's it. And right now, we do it in the batch process. There's not a good way for the batch process during the form to tell this needs to be a new request, except if you sleep for one second, it will automatically do it. So if anybody knows the batch process really well, to there, yeah, there doesn't seem to be a way. So it'll probably be a core a core request to change that. We're actually out of time, but we can do one more okay. question. Can we do one more question yeah. or is yep. that okay with you? Yep. Yeah, and Sorry. also find me in the contribution room tomorrow and Friday. Um, I would love to get people to test this or people who want to contribute or ping me on Drupal Slack or if you see me in the halls. Hi. Um, so the reason I'm very interested in this module is because like we mentioned yesterday, we have I have an agency that runs 600 websites. Yeah. And every month, this the maintenance takes uh, a very large amount of time. So you d you mentioned that you're not going to do database updates. So is there going to be an option for us to risk it and have it run it? Uh, because uh, for us that have like yep. you know uh, regular backups and we're yep. willing to to go yep. back to a previous version, because uh, it's still not going to be automatic if we have yeah. to go into every site and do the database yeah. updates. Yeah. So I think in that case, you would have to like extend our cron updater. And I'm not positive we didn't make that final. So you would have to do some work. Um, so for something like that, you would either have to remove our validator that says, and all the validators at service, that says don't allow this during cron update. You could just remove it. At that point, it wouldn't run the database updates, but you could run them yourselves and post apply. But you're doing something we don't recommend. But it's possible. Like it's all services and event listeners and stuff. So you can really customize it in, a, in ways by removing certain validators and doing other stuff during events. So you could do it, it would require custom code. Okay. But not very much custom code, but dangerous custom code. <laughs> all right, sadly we're out of time, but thank all you very much, Ted. All right. Thank you.